Okay, good morning, dear. Welcome. So now we are in front of a real robot. So we are going to understand how this robot can be modeled in the Bose MFRO. So this is called Vector Robot, and uh, my students are doing experiment on it. You see, this is an example of cobot, cooperative robot, because this industrial robot earlier, earlier they had to be caged because otherwise they will bang. There was a lot of uh, security issues, okay? And uh, unfortunately, there are some uh, incidents where the robot uh, killed um, factory worker, worker. So, but this will not do any harm, okay? So this is called Cobot. The name of the robot is Onukul or Bextar. Bextar is a trade name and we have uh, given the name Onukul, right? After the great Satyajit's uh, film on this, long before he thought about what robot could be, uh, what we are seeing now, studying now. So this is cooperative robot or cobot, and it has two arms, right? And base is fixed, but it is on a wheel. If required, we can actually. Uh, move it somewhere, okay? So this is called uh, work, uh, working table or work zone, but the robot has a workspace, reachable workspace, means wherever it can move in three, three dimension is its workspace, just like me, I have some workspace, okay? The robot has some workspace, the space which covered uh, by a working envelope where if something escaped, robot can reach is called his workspace. Now workspace could be different time, different types. We'll discuss all these issues. Visible workspace, dextrous workspace, all kinds of things. Right now you know that robot, wherever robot can move, it is in workspace. Robot has also camera uh, here uh, on the gripper, right? And we have also, this, this resolutions are not good, so my student told us that I need uh, high resolution camera. Okay, we have installed a very high resolution camera because we are doing some research work with this robot for grasping, intelligent grasping. Means, you know, for me or for you, we can grasp any object, but when you were a kid, you could not grasp it skillfully. That's why your parents were very worried that you should not be given uh, some sophisticated or glass item because you will break it because you are inefficient in uh, grasping. But over the years you learn. Now you are skilled. So similar technology we are trying to develop for robot through learning can we impart a skilled uh, grasping characteristic to this robot. So this is an example of a manipulating robot because base is fixed and these are the morphological uh, structures you see. This is called gripper. This gripper can actually open and close. Okay. I will, I will see whether... Okay. So this is uh, closed. This is open. Closed. Okay. So these are the bang bang gripper. But Actually, the robot has a gripper library, means whatever the robot is, just, just like our computer is there and you can uh, load uh, different softwares, so robot is given and depending on your work requirement, you can uh, choose any gripper, multi-finger gripper, everything can be done, okay, it, uh, so this is object oriented again, so it is designed and kept separately in a library, you have to call the library, and bring some other hardware, of course, uh, multi-finger robot, just put it here, uh, screw it here and it will be robots, robot will be working, okay, manipulating this multiple finger, because they have actuators, separate actuators. Also, we have uh, possibility of uh, installing vacuum gripper, we have a uh, compressor, so we can generate compressed air and by Throttling it, we can create vacuum which will operate this vapor. So all this vacuum 
this electrical motor, this is operated by electrical motor. Here there is uh, electrical motor. So this entire robot is driven by uh, electrical motor. These are called actuators. Okay, this uh, pneumatic actuators when the vapor is operated pneumatically. Okay, uh, and uh, um, electrical actuators when the robot is actually uh, operated uh, by uh, motor, those are called sometimes heavy uh, duty robot. For example, in Germany uh, and other countries, they use robots for uh, construction industry. They are very huge, crane-like structure. So they could be uh, driven by um, hydraulic uh, pressure. Okay, so all hydraulic, pneumatic, electrical, these are called actuating device which make the links uh, move into one with respect to other. You see, this is one link, this is another link, this is called joint and on this joint actually the motors could be mounted or sometimes water could be mounted somewhere else and uh, transmission, uh, through transmission the, uh, the driving can be given. But most normally the motor is here, another motor is here, so this is another link, this is another link. So, and see, these are joints. Okay, this is one, another joint. Okay, joint is moving. And you see, not all joint can move 360 degrees. So this is, uh, this is called range of the joint. Every joint has certain, uh, certain range. Okay. So we are trying to, in this course, we are trying to model such robot so that my students here are now uh, controlling the robot using Roche, um, which is a meta operating system. Okay. So since this has a model, this uh, through operating system actually we can uh, control that is move the robot according to our need. So that's a, a brief, I thought that you should actually see actual, what actual robot is. There are various, millions of robots are there in the industry of various types. For example, Puma, this is Vector, there is Cara, all kind of robots are there, okay. Uh, but basic uh, structure is the same, just like there are 130 billion, eh? we are about 130 plus billion people in our country. Eh? They are all different, but they are skeleton, they are all having, if I am correct, 206 uh, bones and all the two limbs, okay. So internal structure is same, right. Similarly, this is the situation and we are trying to teach you that uh, universal internal structure which we call robot anatomy. So first mathematical foundation robotics, we study robot anatomy. Come over here and let us study robot anatomy in detail, right. So here we are, huh? this is two link robot manipulator, two link robot manipulator, this is seven link, the robot which I have shown you, but here for simplicity, the same technique can be extended to any number of link analysis techniques, right? Uh, any five in uh, six, seven, not any, hundred links robot cannot be analyzed in this way. Although they are there, eh? snake type robots, okay. Hyper, they are called hyperdynamic robot, more complicated structure. We are studying normal robots which are available in the industry and uh, research institutions. Okay. So here is an example of tooling robot manipulator. So this is a kinematic relation which we established the other day in my other lecture. So at any instant of time, instead of time, uh, this planar uh, robot say has moved theta 1 degree and this link, link 1 has moved theta 1 degree with respect to the Cartesian coordinate x-axis and uh, this uh, link has moved with respect to the earlier link theta 2. So this is a kinematic relation I can establish, I can establish uh, x equals to L1 cos theta 1 plus L2 cos theta 1 plus theta 2 this x component of this 2 L1 and L2 vector and then uh, y component is 
just like so. Now here are two basic fundamental problems we can formulate. Okay, one is called forward kinematics. Okay, so in more general term, let us have space here. This is called Cartesian space, and I have a joint space here. So C space and J space. Now if and my motors are here actually, or actuators are here, which are actually rotating the links. Now if these values are given, J space is given, and you are calculating the C space, Cartesian space, then the problem is called forward kinematics problem. Okay, and look at these two elegant equation. This is equation number one, equation number two. Uh, the moment you are giving the values of theta one and theta two, you can exactly know what is the value, and uh, the robot arm will move with some definite uh, position calculated by these values, assuming L1 and L2 are known, they are link length, okay. So, no way a robot can uh, have any ambiguity. So, that's why the mapping between joint space and C space are linear mapping we call. Any value you plug in here, robot will move uh, unambiguously to the destination, right? given by the calculated x and y. Okay? Is it clear? So this is called linear mapping. So for kinematics, linear mapping. Linear mapping between joint space and partition space. But what will happen if I ask robot to move somewhere in the Cartesian space, say xy. So now xy is given, not theta 1 theta 2 is given and from given x y we are calculating theta 1 theta 2. So for given c space we are calculating j space. So this is forward kinematics, for forward kinematics and when c space is given and you are calculating j space it's called inverse kinematics. And this, this is called mapping is linear in forward kinematics. But in inverse kinematics, when your uh, C space is given, Cartesian space is given, and you are trying to calculate the J space, joint space, no more, these two tiny equations are linear. So mapping is not linear. Okay, why? Intuitively you can see. Robot can move its angles theta 1 and theta 2 like this. Or robot can also, you can draw a parallelogram. Okay, so this could be another feasible robot movement. So, this could be another alternative theta 1 dash theta 2. So, the solution is no more unique. So, that's why we call this mapping non-linear mapping because there is no unique way the robot can understand that how to move its joint. And this is true for us also. You see, my hand, hand tick. Right, and here is my nose. Suppose somehow I, my hand is in some home position like this, and I need to move my hand here. Right, I can move it like this, I can move it like this, I can move it like this. So these are all possible or feasible ways of moving my hand. But our um, challenge is to move my hands in such a way that minimum energy is consumed. So in case of robot, we try to 
throwing into solve some optimization problem, you see. Which we are not solving optimization that problem, I believe, which is based on our training over the years. My hand um, characteristically will move or follow the um, minimum distance uh, possible. But we need to give that um, training to robot that out of so many feasible solutions, because robot doesn't know. If, and this is very common, right? I ask robot to move X5. I ask robot, that's how robot programming um, people do, that robot need to go somewhere. You are instructing order. And robot unambiguously need to execute your order. And how ambiguously? I need to design a planner. Robot otherwise, uh, and then uh, execution of the planner is in the form of program I will have to write. And then only robot will know that, okay, I am here, that means theta 1, theta 2 values at present is there and I have, so robot needs to calculate all the solutions first. Then only it will know what are the feasible theta 1, theta 2 values where it, uh, it can move, okay. And only knowing that and also knowing where present state of the joint values, it can, it can take a decision that I will locate my hand is, uh, say, uh, like this, if it is like this, so it is very common that robots should be driven to this theta 1 and theta 2 and not this theta 1 and theta 2 because then motor has to rotate uh, or consume more energy, it has to rotate larger degrees to the joints. So is it clear? So I need to create a planner, for create a planner I need to solve the inverse kinematics problem fast because solving these two equation is not easy when it is mapping is not linear. When linear for kinematics, no issue at all that whatever uh, uh, this uh, actuators are equipped with encoder, the sensor, whatever sensor value you have, plug in here, that's a degree uh, um, joint uh, value and you will, you will get robot move somewhere. But that somewhere is not your in control. But if you want robot to move as directed by you, then robot need to solve inverse kinematics. Okay. And then the problem is here, inverse kinematics, non-linear mapping. Problem is because of non-linear mapping. Okay. So we will try to solve this inverse kinematics problem because that's the basic um, basic problem we need to solve to move forward because as I said I need to plan a trajectory and execute the trajectory with the help of a uh, robot and effector. So we will see how step by step we can make a model, mathematical model which will enable robot uh, like a smart guy to move where we instruct. Okay, so uh, that solution we'll make. Okay, uh, in the next class. Thank you for your attention.